valvovaginal candidiasis. Very many women often suffer from either a single episode or recurrent episodes of a genital infection called valvovaginal candidiasis. This disease is characterized by signs and symptoms of valvovaginal inflammation in the presence of candida species. But the identification of valvovaginal candida alone is not indicative of disease as candida species are part of the normal flora of the genital tract of approximately 25% of women. A point to note is, valvovaginal candidiasis is not considered a sexually transmitted disease. The prevalence of valvovaginal candidiasis is highest among women in their reproductive years and it's the second most common cause of vaginitis symptoms. Sporadic attacks of valvovaginal candidiasis often occur without an identifiable precipitating factor. Nevertheless, a number of factors predispose to symptomatic infection. The disease diabetes mellitus is one of the major factors in that diabetic women who have poor glycemic control are more prone to valvovaginal candidiasis. Broad spectrum antibiotics use also significantly increases the risk of developing valvovaginal candidiasis because these drugs inhibit the normal bacterial flora which favors growth of potential fungal pathogens such as candida. States of increased estrogen levels like pregnancy and postmenopausal estrogen therapy also increase the likelihood of developing valvovaginal candidiasis. Immunosuppressed patients such as those taking immunosuppressive drugs or with HIV have increased chances of developing candidal infections. Genital itching is the dominant feature of valvovaginal candidiasis. However, valvo burning, soreness, and irritation are also common and can be accompanied by painful urination or painful sexual intercourse. Physical examination of the genitals usually reveals reddening and swelling of the vulva and vaginal mucosa. There can be little or no discharge. When present, it's classically white, thick, and clumpy with no or minimal odor. However, the discharge may be thin and loose, watery and indistinguishable from that in other types of vaginitis. The diagnosis of valvovaginal candidiasis is based on the presence of candida on microscopy or culture of vaginal discharge in a woman with characteristic clinical findings. Self-diagnosis of valvovaginal candidiasis is frequently inaccurate and should be discouraged. Treatment is indicated to relieve symptoms. Asymptomatic women and their sexual partners do not require treatment. The treatment regimen is based on whether the woman has an complicated infection or complicated infection. For women with uncomplicated valvovaginal candidiasis, a single dose of oral fluconazole for treatment, rather than multi-dose and topical regimens, is considered. For women with severe symptoms or immunocompromise, they require longer courses of therapy than women with uncomplicated infection. Therefore, fluconazole in two sequential doses is given three days apart rather than topical antimicrotic agents. For pregnant women, a topical drug like rotrimazole or miconazole is used as vaginal pessaries for seven days rather than a nistatin pessary or an oral drug. Women with recurrent infection should try to eliminate or reduce risk factors for infection. Thanks for watching and for more videos with related information, simply subscribe and remember to follow us on Facebook.